The Zodiac Killer was a serial killer who operated in Northern California in the late 1960s and early 1970s. He is widely known due to the fact that his identity has never been discovered and the taunting letters he would send to the press where he referred to himself as the Zodiac. There have been many theories as to who the Zodiac Killer may have been, but as of yet there is no conclusive evidence. Some view him as mentally ill, others as a violent attention seeker. And there are those, of course, who actually admire him and were inspired by him to themselves kill. There is more unknown about him than there is known, yet why does he fascinate us? Why has he captured the public's imagination? A 20th century Jack the Ripper, his true motivations were only known to himself. As well as taking at least five innocent lives, he helped to usher in the age of stranger danger in conjunction with media sensationalism. The first murders attributed to the Zodiac Killer were the shootings of high school students Betty Lou Jensen and David Faraday on December 20th, 1968. The couple were on their first date and were parked on a lover's lane. It is believed that another car parked beside the couple and a man got out who ordered the couple out of the car. Betty Lou probably exited the car first and as David was getting out he was shot in the head. Betty Lou was shot five times in the back as she ran away. Just before midnight on July 4th, 1969, a couple named Darlene and Michael drove into the Blue Rock Springs Park in Vallejo and parked. While the couple sat in the car, a second car drove into the lot and parked alongside them, but almost immediately drove away. Returning about 10 minutes later, the second car parked behind them. The driver exited the vehicle and approached the passenger side door of the car, carrying a 9mm Luger with a flashlight attached to it. He aimed at the couple and shot five times. Both victims were hit, and several bullets had passed through Michael and into Darlene. The shooter walked away from the car but heard Michael moaning and finished his job. A man then phoned the Vallejo Police Department and claimed responsibility for the murders. The caller also took credit for the murders of Betty Lou and Daniel six and a half months previous. The call was traced to a phone booth only a few blocks away from the Vallejo Police Department. Darlene was pronounced dead at the hospital. Michael survived the attack. On August 1st, 1969, three letters from the unknown killer were received at the Vallejo Times Herald, the San Francisco Chronicle and the San Francisco Examiner. The letters were nearly identical and took credit for the shootings of both couples. Each letter also included one third of a 408 character cryptogram, which she claimed contained his identity. The killer demanded that they be printed on each paper's front page or he would kill a dozen people over the weekend. The killer revealed himself to be a delusional psychotic or perhaps a cunning manipulator as many words were misspelled and the content of the letter was filled with the bizarre idea that killing somebody would render them your slave in the afterlife. Only the San Francisco Chronicle published its third of the cryptogram, albeit on page four. The threatened murders did not occur and all three parts were eventually published. On August 7th, 1969, another letter was received at the San Francisco Examiner with the salutation, Dear Editor, this is the Zodiac speaking. This was the first time the killer had called himself the Zodiac. The letter was a response to a police chief's request for more details that would prove he had killed three people. In it, the Zodiac included details about the murders which had not yet been made public, as well as a message to the police that when they cracked his code, they would quote, have me, highlighting the attention seeking that possibly lay at the heart of this killing spree. On September 27th, 1969, College students Brian Hartnell and Cecilia Shepard were picnicking at Lake Berryessa. A man approached him wearing a black executioner's hood with clip-on sunglasses over the eye holes and on his chest was a white cross circle symbol. He approached him with a gun and claimed to be an escaped convict on a run to Mexico. He had Shepard tie up Hartnell and tied her himself. He then produced a knife and stabbed them both repeatedly. The killer then drew the cross circle symbol on Hartnell's car door with a black felt tip pen and wrote beneath it the dates and locations of his previous murders. The now serial killer called the sheriff's office from a payphone to report his crime. The phone was found and detectives were able to lift a still wet palm print from the telephone but were never able to match it to any suspect. After hearing their screams for help, a man and his son who were fishing in a nearby cove discovered the victims. Cecilia Shepard was conscious when the police arrived, providing them with a detailed description of the attacker. She lapsed into a coma during transport to the hospital and died two days later, 
but Hardnell survived to recount his tale. On October 11, 1969, a man entered the cab driven by Paul Stein in San Francisco. Near the destination, Stein was shot once in the head with a 9mm. The killer was seen by three teenagers across the street who called the police. Two blocks from the crime scene, an officer observed a white man walking along the sidewalk and stepping onto a stairway leading to the front yard of one of the homes on the north side of the street. The radio dispatcher had alerted to be on the lookout for a black suspect, so they drove past him without stopping. A search ensued, but no suspects were found. The three teen witnesses worked with the police artist to prepare a composite sketch of Stein's killer. On October 14, 1969, the San Francisco Chronicle received another letter from the Zodiac, this time containing a piece of Stein's shirt as proof he was a killer. It also included a threat about killing school children. At 2pm on October 20th, 1969, someone claiming to be the Zodiac called Oakland PD demanding that one of the two prominent lawyers, F. Lee Bailey or Melvin Belly, appear on the local television show AM San Francisco. Belly did appear on the show. Eventually someone claiming to be the Zodiac called several times and said his name was Sam. Belly agreed to meet him in Daly City, but the suspect never showed up. On the night of March 22nd, 1970, a pregnant woman named Kathleen Johns was driving from San Bernardino to Petaluma. Her 10-month-old daughter was travelling with her when suddenly a car behind her began honking its horn and flashing its lights. The man said that the real weir was wobbly and offered to fix it. He had in actuality loosened the lug nuts, forcing the woman to accept a ride from him. The man didn't stop at the service station as he had said, but instead kept driving. Kathleen realised that she had to escape for the safety of her and her daughter. She took the first opportunity to jump out of the car with her daughter and hid in the field. When Johns gave her statement to the sergeant on duty, she noticed the police compass sketch of Paul Stein's killer and recognised him as the man who abducted her and her child. In a letter to the Chronicle postmarked July 24, 1970, the Zodiac took credit for Kathleen John's abduction. On October 27, 1970, Chronicle reporter Paul Avery, who was covering the Zodiac, received a Halloween card signed with the letter Z and the Zodiac's cross circle symbol. Also written on the card was Peekaboo, you are doomed. Soon after receiving this letter, Avery received an anonymous letter alerting him to the similarities between the Zodiac's activities and the unsolved murder of Sherry Jo Bates, which had occurred four years earlier at the City College in Riverside in the greater Los Angeles area. On October 30th, 1966, 18-year-old Sherry Jo Bates, a student of Riverside Community College, spent the evening at the campus library until 9pm. Neighbours reported hearing a scream around 10.30pm. Bates was found dead the next morning a short distance from the library between two abandoned houses. She had been brutally beaten and stabbed to death. A man's Timex watch with a torn wristband was found nearby. A month later, nearly identical typewriter letters were mailed to the Riverside Police and the Riverside Press Enterprise titled The Confession. The author claimed responsibility for the Bates murder, providing details of the crime that were not released to the public. The author warned that Bates is not the first and she will not be the last. In December 1966, a poem was discovered carved into the bottom side of a desktop in the Riverside City College Library. Titled, Sick of Living, Unwilling to Die, the poem's language and handwriting resembled that of the Zodiac's letters. It was signed with what were assumed to be the initials R.H. On March 13, 1971, five months after Avery's article linking the Zodiac to the Riverside murder, the Zodiac mailed a letter to the Los Angeles Times. In the letter, he credited the police instead of Avery for discovering his quote, Riverside activity, but they are only finding the easy ones. There are a hell of a lot more down there, end quote. On March 22nd, 1971, a postcard to the Chronicle which appeared to claim responsibility for the disappearance of Donna Lass on September 6, 1970. Lass was a nurse at the Sahara Tejo Hotel and Casino. She worked until about 2 a.m. on September 6, 1970, treating her last patient at 1.40 a.m. Later that same day, both Lass's employer and her landlord received phone calls from an unknown male falsely claiming Lass had left town due to a family emergency. Lass was never heard from again. The Zodiac claimed responsibility for the murder in a letter to the press. After this letter, the Zodiac remained silent for nearly three years. The Chronicle received a letter from him, postmarked January 29, 1974, in which he suggested that he had killed 37 people. This would be the last confirmed communication from the killer. 
Arthur Lee Allen has been put forward as a potential suspect for decades now, although this is based on circumstantial evidence. Allen had been interviewed by the police from the early days of the Zodiac investigations and was the subject of several search warrants over a 20 year period. Police detectives as well as amateur sleuths view Allen as the most likely suspect. Allen was questioned in relation to the Lake Berryessa killings because he had been reported in the vicinity at the time of the attack. He said he was scuba diving at Salt Point. Allen again came to police attention in 1971 when his friend Donald Cheney reported to police that Allen had spoken of his desire to kill people, use the name Zodiac and secure a flashlight to a firearm for visibility at night. According to Cheney, this conversation occurred no later than January 1st, 1969. Allen had been fired from his job as an elementary school teacher in March 1968 after allegations of sexual misconduct with students. He was generally well regarded by those who knew him, but was also described as being fixated on young children. In September 1962, San Francisco police obtained a search warrant for Allen's residence but found nothing tying him to the case. Vallejo police served another search warrant at Allen's residence in February 1991. Two days after Allen's death in 1992, Vallejo police served another warrant and seized property from Allen's residence. They found the same round of typewriter used at one point by the Zodiac. They also found a Zodiac brand wristwatch. In addition, he lived in Vallejo and worked minutes away from where one of the first victims lived and where one of the killings took place. With the advent of DNA testing and law enforcement, many were confident that the Zodiac killer would be found. A comparison was made with the DNA of Allen and that found in the saliva on stamps and envelopes of the Zodiac's letters. It was not a match, but it cannot be stated definitively that it is DNA from the Zodiac on the envelopes. Retired police handwriting expert Lloyd Cunningham, who worked the Zodiac case for decades, added that none of Allen's writings came close to the Zodiac. There have been many other suspects. In 2009, an episode of the History Channel television series Mystery Quest looked at newspaper editor Richard Gajkowski, who died in 2004. During the time of the murders, Gajkowski worked for Good Times, a counterculture newspaper. His appearance resembles the composite sketch and Nancy Slover, the Vallejo police dispatcher who was contacted by the Zodiac shortly after the Blue Rock Springs attack, has identified a recording of Gajkowski's voice as being the same as the Zodiac's. In February 2014, it was reported that a man named Louis Joseph Myers had confessed to a friend in 2001 that he was the Zodiac killer after learning he was dying from cirrhosis of the liver. He requested that his friend, Randy Kenny, go to the police upon his death. Myers died in 2002, but Kenny allegedly had difficulties getting officers to cooperate and take the claim seriously. There are several potential connections between Myers and the Zodiac case. Myers attended the same high schools as victims David Faraday and Betty Lou Jensen. Myers also allegedly worked in the same restaurant as the victim Darlene Fern. Myers also had access to the same sort of military boot whose print was found at the Lake Berryessa crime scene. Furthermore, during the 1971 to 1973 period when no Zodiac letters were received, Myers was stationed overseas with the military. Kenny says that Myers confessed he targeted couples because he had a bad breakup with a girlfriend. While officers associated with the case are skeptical, they believe the story is credible enough to investigate.